Um, I think this might be new. I, I don't think this is something that you guys learned in secondary two last year. It's not a big deal. It's not hard. I just don't think it's review. Uh, I know you've learned about functions. A relation, this word here, a relation. A relation is just a way to relate one thing to another, like x to y. So a table of values is one kind of a relation because it shows how x relates to y. So write this relation down here. This is a relation because it says if x is negative 2, y is 4. Or if x is negative 1, y is 7. It shows how something relates to something else. Every relation has an inverse. So the point of today's lesson is to, uh, to teach you how to find the inverse of a relation. You listening carefully? All those numbers in the x column, the negative 2, the negative 1, the 0, and the 1. Here's how you find the inverse. Okay, you multiply them by 640, then you take the square root and divide it by pi, and then you raise it to the third power. Okay, and then you minus 4. Did you follow? <laughs> I'm totally joking. I don't even remember what I just said. Here's how you find the inverse. You ready for this? You switch x and y. That's all you do. You switch all the x's and y's. So I want you to create a table that represents the inverse of the table we started with. Go ahead and do it. You switch, you switch all the x's and y's. That's how you find an inverse. Now I know I haven't shown you any examples, but I figure you guys are clever enough to, to do this on your own. All of these numbers in the x column, where are they going to go? In the y column. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. You switch all the x's and y's. All these numbers in the y column from the original relation go in the x column. That's really all there is to it. That's how you find the inverse. Okay. So on your homework, and we're going to do one of these here in a second, your homework starts just by giving you a table. You have to find the inverse. No big. We also have it <coughs> on a graph. And it's the same thing. I want you to plot all of these points. Don't connect them with a the line. Just plot the points. So we have negative 2, 4. Go ahead and do this here. Plot all these points just on the original relation. The negative 1, 7, 0, 10, and 1, 13. So on your homework, you're going to be given a graph with a bunch of points on it. A graph is another type of relation. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. So each point represents a relation between an x and a y number. If x is negative 2, y is 4. If x is negative 1, y is 7. So it's a relation. So how would you find the inverse if you're given points on a graph? Yeah, exactly. You find the coordinates of the points, and you switch the x and y of all of them. It's just the same thing as on a table. What I mean is this point right here, for example, has the coordinate pair negative 2, comma 4. So if you switch the x and y, it becomes 4, comma negative 2. So that point has an inverse point down here, 4, comma negative 2. And you do that for all the points so you can find on the graph. You switch all the x's and the y's. So this one is 
negative one seven, this one is zero comma ten, and this one is one comma thirteen. So if you switch all those x's and y's, it's just the same points you had in this table, it's no different. But you have seven negative one, ten zero, and thirteen comma one. Pretty easy, right? One more thing I want you to add to the graph, though. Try to do this as neatly as you can. Um, here we go. This line right here. It splits right through the middle, diagonally. Ooh, close. So draw a line in there like that, dot a line if you can. This line represents the equation y equals x. Do you notice anything super cool about the points that were the original relation and the points that represent the inverse relation? It's a, re it's a reflection. That's always true. If you graph a relation and then you graph its inverse, it's always a reflection across this line y equals x. Okay. The reason for that is you find an inverse by switching x and y, but on this line right here, if you switch x and y, you get the same thing. Okay. You guys following? So. On some of the uh, on some of the assignment problems on your homework, you're going to have to graph a relation and then graph its inverse. You got to make sure that it's a reflection across this line, y equals x. So, even though I know it's easy, you probably could do without the practice. Just to be sure, uh, open to this page right here, 284. Page 284, there's an A practice. So I want you to do number one. All right, I need somebody to come up here and draw a table, just a table of the inverse. No biggie. Come on. It's fun. Is that a hand raise? Your hand was up like this. Does that count as a hand raise, you guys? Her hand was just like this when I looked at her. Well, close enough. <laughs> there you go. You switch the place of x and y. How easy could that be? And you're supposed to graph on this too, right? So let's see, zero, or one comma zero. Two comma one, two. So there are points from the original relation. These are points from the inverse, zero one. Two, three, three, four. So that's what your graph should look like. Even though it's not necessary, just to check if you wanted to, you can draw that other line y equals x. Just to make sure that they are reflections across that line. Looks like they are. Well, that's the. That. Can we move on? Are we okay with all this stuff? Let's move on to some a uh, little more challenging stuff. If you're given a table or a graph, you just switch all the x's and the y's. Let's let's move on here to 
finding the inverse when given the equation. So we don't have a table or a graph. Now we have the equation or the expression representing function. So here's an example. y equals x over 2 minus 4. The same, uh, the same method applies. Whatever we did for the tables or the graphs, we're going to do here. You switch the place up. What is it? Come on now. Switch place of x and y, yeah. So switch place of x and y. That's the first step. Switch the place of x and y. So you would write x equals y over 2 minus 4. And then one more thing to do is to solve for y. That means get y by itself. So after you switch the place of x and y, then you get y by itself. So what, uh, what's going to be the first step here? If we want to get this y right here all by itself. Add 4 to the other side. I, I, I agree with that. So we're going to have x plus 4 equals y divided by 2. And then you multiply by 2. you got to multiply everything on the left side by 2. So I'm going to put parentheses around the expression, multiply it all by 2. And you get 2x plus 8 is equal to y. Now this is how almost all textbooks show you how to find the inverse. And it's, it's, it's probably the best way and the safest way, but I want to explain something here real quick about what an inverse really is in terms of uh, an equation specifically. If you plugged in a number for x right here, it doesn't matter what the number is, any random number. You guys with me? Where my pencil is up there? If you plugged in a number for x, what's the first thing that happens to it? And I'm talking about order of operations. What's the first thing that happens to it here? I'm going to write this down. The first thing that happens to x is it's divided by... Divided... By two. Then what's the second thing? It's then you subtract four. You guys are alright with this? Now what an inverse is is it's an expression that can that contains the exact opposite operations in the reverse order. If that makes sense. What's the opposite of subtracting four? So if as a first step we added four and then as a second step, we would undo this. What undoes this operation? Multiply by 2. So a lot of students actually can just start to build fun um, inverses in their head by undoing what's happening over here. If you started with x and then added 4 and then multiplied that whole thing by 2, what do you end up with? You end up with 2x plus 8, which is the inverse. You add 4, first of all, then you multiply by 2, and then you get the inverse. The inverse is just a collection of reverse order uh, operations from the original relation. Let's try uh, another one here. Part B. y equals 3x minus 8. Find the inverse.
Come on. We have a bunch of scaredy cat boys in this class. You're not confident in your math abilities? Damn, all right. Take the pen of destiny. plus 8 all over 3 equals y. What do you guys think? Okay, you're not off the hook yet. You got to show us that you got that. Sorry. You're going to teach us. Press the button. There you go. So you switch the place of x and y? Switched the place of X and Y and then got Y by itself. Very good. Thank you. See, so was that so scary? Was that so scary? No. See? Um, and, and like I said before, this is the way that I recommend you practice doing these problems, especially some of the more complicated ones we're going to be doing here. But for those that like to think their way through problems, you guys, if you plugged in a number for X, what's the first thing that happens to it? Multiply it by 3, and then you would subtract 8. So if you did everything in reverse order, wouldn't you add 8 first, and then you would add 8 first, and then divide by 3, right? So this contains the opposite operations as that. That's why it's called the inverse. Uh, ooh, that's not the right answer. Something else completely. Well, one more here. Part C. Different type of function. These were, or different type of relation. These are a little bit easier. Um, y equals um, 2x squared. Minus four. Maybe we better do this one together. All right. First step is to switch the place of x and y. So you're going to write x equals in parentheses two y squared minus four. Now we got to get this y by itself. There's a 2 here by it we're going to eventually have to get rid of. There's an exponent we're going to have to eventually get rid of. And then there's this minus 4. But you have to get rid of these in the right order. What do we get rid of first? The minus 4. We get rid of that first. So add 4. Good. Keep it going. And I get rid of the exponent by square rooting. Had this been an exponent of 3, we wouldn't have used the square root. What would have gotten rid of an exponent of 3? The cube root. So you, gotta, you might be sure you, you use the appropriate root. Anyway, exactly. Here's, here's one thing that math Excel is going to be pretty picky on, I believe. Um, over here on the right side, the square and the square root, they just cancel each other out. But on the left side, if you use a square root to solve a problem, you've got to put a plus or minus sign in front of it. So you, ha you have now plus or minus square root of x plus 4 is equal to 2y. You've got to put that plus or minus in front of it. Last step. Just divide everything by 2. So the inverse is y equals plus or minus square root of x plus 4 all over. Two. Not so bad. Even with uh, equations like this, these are still pretty easy. 
So here's a couple more to practice. 285, the A practice on 285. Holy crap, we're almost out of time. On page 285, the A practice, numbers three and four. So for question three, we started with y equals four minus three x. So to find the inverse, switch the place of x and y, and then get y by itself. So what do I need to get rid of first? So subtract four. Divide everything by negative 3. So the inverse here is x minus 4 all over negative 3. I'd, I'd accept that for full points. I, th I think math Excel would as well. This is not the only way to write the problem or to write the answer. Rather than dividing the whole thing by negative 3, you could have divided by negative 3 separately. So an alternate form of this could have been y equals negative x thirds plus four thirds. You could have written it that way as well. It means the exact same thing. This is the more common way. I'm okay with this one here. Uh, question four might have been a little more challenging for you. Starts the same way though. Switch plays of x and y. Get rid of the 5, exactly. So we have x minus 5 equals quantity 1 minus 2y. Now we can square root. The square root and the square cancel each other out. And if you forgot this, you need to add this in here. Make sure it's in your notes. When you use the square root, you got to put a plus or minus right here. So what's plus or minus? Square root of x minus 5 is equal to 1 minus 2y. Good, keep going. Yep. Subtract the 1. I don't see many of you make this mistake, so I think we're all good, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Where do you subtract the 1? That's right. You can't, you can't subtract the 1 from that 5. That doesn't work. It's got to be outside of it. So I'm going to write a plus or minus, square root of x minus 5, and then the minus 1 right here. Last step, divide everything by negative 2. So the inverse is plus or minus square root of x minus 5 minus 1 all over negative 2. Now I promise we're almost done. I know it's been forever. Hang with me here for about six more minutes. New example. It's not that it's new stuff. It's just written differently. Some of the problems are going to be written with function notation. Instead of y equals, it's going to be f of x. Abby, do you want to shut the door there? Thank you. It doesn't change anything. It just changes how you write your answer, pretty much. You still do the same thing. You switch the place of x and y. Because isn't f of x the same thing as y? So it makes it easier for you. You can change it back to a y to start with. So you can just write it as y equals square root of x plus 1 minus 5. And then from here on out, it's the same. You switch their places. I apologize. I'm going quick. I know. we got to finish this. Now we get y by itself, so. What do we do? Add the 5 to both sides. Yep, 
parentheses square. Now, we, we talked about this last week. It's got to be parentheses. You can't square individual terms one at a time. It has to be as a group. Square and a square root cancel each other out. So you have quantity x plus 5 squared equals y plus 1. Let's track the 1. Here's where it's different, though. This, this is the correct answer. We just haven't represented it the right way. We started using f of x. We didn't start with a y, so we have to go back to that. But here's what you need to write. The inverse of f of x is f to the negative 1. So when we're in function notation, the original function is f of x, the inverse is f to the negative 1 of x. So if this were a test or you map the Excel, you would have to write this as f to the negative 1 of x is equal to x plus 5 squared minus 1. That's the only difference. If you start with f of x rather than y, you end with f to the negative 1. Okay, this, uh, we have one more here, and this one's, um, a lot more challenging. The good news is it won't get any more difficult than this one here. Here we go, you guys. Last one. We're on the last one. We can do it. We can do this. Find the inverse of f of x equals 2x over x plus 3. The, the process is still the same. This is not a new method. It's what we've been doing the last hour. And if it makes it easier for you, you know, change the f of x into a y. There's a few steps here that you need to write down so that you have an example to look at when you're trying to do your homework. What's the first thing we're going to do? Switch uh, all of the y's become x's, all of the x's become y's. So this becomes an x over here on the left side. And on the right side, you get 2y over y plus 3. So that became an x, those became y's. We good so far? <laughs> Okay, the, the thing that concerns me most of all right now is that we have a fraction over here. We don't like fractions, do we? One way to get rid of a fraction is to multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply over here by y plus 3 and over here by y plus 3. That would be a wise choice. You get rid of the fraction that way. I'm going to actually combine two steps here into one if you're okay with that. Not only am I going to multiply by y plus 3 over here, I'm also going to distribute the x into the parentheses. So that becomes yx plus 3x is equal to 2y. You all with me? What is it we're solving? What is it we're trying to get by itself? We're trying to get y by itself. Problem is there's two of them. So the next step is to get all the y's on the same side. Anything that doesn't have a y on the other side. You guys understand what I just said? Yeah. Anything that has a y needs to be on the same side of the equation. Anything that doesn't have a y needs to be on the opposite side. So this 3x needs to move over here, and this 2y needs to move over here. So you subtract them both. I'm going to write this as yx minus 2y is equal to negative 3x. I subtracted the 2y over to this side, and I subtracted the 3x over to the other side. Still with me? 
Why would we want to get all the y's on the same side? Take a look at what I had on the left side. Is there a common factor? If we get all the y's on the same side, isn't that the common factor? So factor it out. Factor out the y. You're left with x minus 2. See, the problem was we had multiple y's. You can't get y's alone if there's multiple y's. But when you factor it out, take a look at what happened. We have a single y. How do we get it by itself? Divide by what? Divide by x minus 2. Yep. So y equals negative 3x divided by x minus 2. But yep, technically we started with f of x, so we end with f to the negative 1 of x equals negative 3x over x minus 2. Man, right on time.